The wonders of life got the prettiest side for everyone to enjoy. Standing up close by the Christmas tree, glimmering light, I am right where I wanna be. I'll be home for a couple of days, wander around with you. You and me in the cold, thought it'd never be true. Wherever I go, I got you. Oh, I have stopped running, there is no way trying. You better loosen your belts. Drinking hot wine by the fire, don't care of anything else. It's Christmas. Welcome to the 25 Days of Christmas, an Advent podcast where we watch a Christmas movie or a special every day until Christmas. I am Patricia, and I'm here with my sister, Carlene. Hello, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about an adaptation based off of the classic Christmas tale, A Christmas Carol, written by Charles Dickens. Now, there are over 130 adaptations based off of this classic Christmas story. Mostly because it's very relatable and very universal. The story about an old grouchy man named Ebenezer Scrooge who hates Christmas. And he's visited by three spirits so that he can be able to see the goodness that Christmas is able to offer. So we're going to be talking about the latest Christmas Carol adaptation. It's called Scrooge, A Christmas Carol. And it premiered last month on November 18th, 2022. And it is a Netflix exclusive. So... Yeah, once you've seen one Christmas Carol adaptation, you've pretty much seen them all. Except that there's actually many differences here that I never expected. So let's talk about some of the differences. Well, one of them is a musical, which, um, you know, there have been a fair share of Christmas Carol musicals over the years. Another one is that they have several changes to characters' names. There's some different plot points. There are some different character depictions. But more or less, it is the story of Ebenezer Scrooge seeing the goodness of Christmas when all of his life, he pretty much saw Christmas as just an inconvenience. So, yeah, Carlene, uh, what are your thoughts on Scrooge, A Christmas well, Carol? You, it's not only also, if I may, you know, the goodness of Christmas. It's also the errors of his ways. That's true, yeah. Right, so part of the storyline is in hopes to show him how hard-hearted he has become and what the outcome could be for his soul if he continues down this path. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like an intervention yeah. story. Um, so the Scrooge uh, or the Christmas Carol is a movie that in our family we watched. We watch every year. My, my parents really enjoy it. They enjoy the Patrick Stewart version of it. Yes, that's the TNT 1999 version. So we watch that almost every year, every other year, something like that. Uh, And uh, the story is... It's it's an interesting story. Yeah. I think um, I'm not... One of Patty's favorite writers is... uh, Charles Dickens, yes. Charles Dickens, so... I am familiar with some of his stories, but in general, I've never read any of them. <laughs> you you know about Oliver Twist. Yeah, I know about the stories, uh, and I know them secondhand through you, but yeah. me, myself, and I have never read nor investigated these stories. So I think that in general, when you're thinking of The Christmas Carol or Scrooge, it's a little bit like a, a dark take on this story. Yeah. There's some elements you know that I don't love. Um but the difference between the Patrick Stewart or the 1999 version versus the one we just watched, to me, is quite interesting. It is very interesting. Let's just say it's very colorful. Yeah, I'm okay with the colorful elements. I like that it's like me and Patty were speaking like, so although I was not aware, but 130 different adaptations, that's an immense amount of, of the story being retold. I think the most recent ones are not necessarily geared for a younger audience. And Patty did inform me that it wasn't an, an originally or an intention for a younger audience. But, you know, because Christmas time is a family time, mm-hmm. a, a lot of times families are looking for programs to watch together. And so when small children are involved, they're not going to want to sit through a 1999 version of Scrooge. Or the 50s version. Yeah. Like, the, that's not going to appeal to them or most children. So the animation part of it, the new release, 
I thought was like a new way to kind of bring in a younger generation to the story that's classic yeah. and and using an opportunity to retell it and maybe like a more catchy, more punchy kind of way. Yeah. And I think that they succeeded in some ways. And, and in my personal opinion, I didn't like some of their uh, creative licensing. All right. I did like the musical element of it. Yeah. And from what I saw in the credits, and then it just clicked on me immediately. The person who wrote a lot of the music was Leslie Percusi. And he wrote the music for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And he also did the music for the Scrooge musical that came out in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's why they use half of it throughout the movie. Yeah, you kept saying this was in the musical or yeah. this song was in the musical. So I like that. I, I, I like when stories can go back and kind of polish off some of their original details. Mm -hmm. Um... So I, I like the musical element. I like the, some of the graphics. The story was interesting. I, too, like you, didn't feel like there was such, such a need to change some certain characters yeah. and their stories and their plots. Like The original was plenty interesting enough. I don't think they needed to add yeah. new elements. Yeah, like, for example, they decided to include a dog in Scrooge. Mm -hmm. And apparently this dog belonged to Jacob Marley, but when he died... That was when Scrooge decided to take care of her. And I'm like, I always saw Scrooge as a lonely old man. Mm -hmm. Why does he need a dog? And then you pointed out, this reminded me of the Grinch. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that's where they're going with this. Yeah. Well, I don't know because, yeah, like the Grinch, like I was telling Patty, like, you know, his heart was two sizes too small. Yes. And that's exactly how I would think of Mr. Scrooge. That's why he, like, is so cold and bitter is like his heart is too small yeah uh, i think that the dog element kind of like i'm saying it it speaks to a younger generation it speaks to children so you know yeah I dogs guess, and i guess that's true but still it's like you know scrooge is not the grinch no of course not I understand. the grinch hated christmas for a completely different reason mm -hmm. with scrooge it's a lot more tragic and we do get bits of it in the story where we saw that the reason why he hated his nephew was because, um, you know, that was his uh, sister's son and then she died from childbirth. And yeah, that's, that's super dark, though. That was in the original book. Though. Yeah, I know. So that was the... And also, they completely removed the whole, oh, uh, Scrooge's childhood is that he works in a factory, which that doesn't happen in A Christmas Carol. It happens in a lot of other Charles Dickens books, but not a Christmas Carol. In the original, Scrooge was sent away over to a boarding school because his father wanted nothing to do with him due to the fact that when he was born, his mother died of childbirth. So pretty much the same reason why he hated um, Fred because his sister died from childbirth. So there's your sense of a little bit of a connected irony there. Mm -hmm. So there's... Yeah, I think that you were also mentioning, like you're saying, like, Parts of this story were taken from other yes. parts of his writing, other stories. And that, that didn't sit well with me. I don't think it sat well with you. Yeah, it didn't. Because if there was a mixture of David Copperfield. There was a little bit of Great Expectations. And I'm like, yeah, those are great Charles Dickens books. But I'm watching A Christmas Carol. Right. So those elements added into it just was not necessary. No. And yeah, it just muddies it. Like, you know... His work stands alone without needing to be pieced together, piecemeal together from others. Yeah, like I can understand including the music from the old 70s right, musical. Right, because that's, a, you know, yeah, like that is... Uh, part, that's part of a Christmas carol. Right. I think also we noticed a couple of times where they made like quotes... Or, like, lines from, like, other Disney movies? Yes, they did. Like, th you have the scene in which the ghost of Christmas past had talked about, like, um, you know, the past can hurt. But the only way to confront it is, you know, to... Um, like not run from, from it. Yeah, yeah not run from it, but, from, but learn from it. That's the exact same line that Rafiki said to Simba in The Lion King in which that he finally is confronted with his past and he needs mm -hmm. to learn to go back to Pride Rock and confront Scar and... Yeah, um, and there was another mention of uh, a, another from the genie from Aladdin. Yes. It was just kind of like, what what is the need from taking pieces from other work to compile this work? 
it's not necessary. Like no, it's not. The Christmas Carol stands alone, and there's enough material in that to make a good story. Even if you want to re- retailer it or like change some details, there's still enough within that story that you don't have to go and like piecemeal from other places. Yeah, exactly. It just felt very distracting. I will also mention one other piece that I did not like. Again, that you guys have may have heard previously, and of course, this is my personal opinion, but um, things that are more dark and more of the occult, I do not like. And I specifically and more, more, more deeply don't like it when it's um, geared at a younger audience. As adults, we, you know, we have hopefully enough. Uh, of the ability to um, decipher and pick through things that do or do not make us feel comfortable and make a good judgment. But children struggle with that. Uh, They don't always have that ability. And I just felt like there was elements of this that were a little more dark and more sinister. And I didn't think it needed to be there. It had no place. Even though the story is dark in nature, there's a difference between something that has a little bit of a more melancholic um, sadness and and more versus something that's sinister. And I think yeah. that there was elements in this that were of the occult and sinister that I didn't enjoy. Yeah. And I don't think should be allowed when targeting a younger audience. Yeah, there's a scene in which that I have no idea what made them decide to do this. So... Usually when it comes to Christmas Carol adaptations, there are always three spirits. But in this one, it's technically two because the ghost of Christmas present transforms into the Christmas of of things yet to come. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? In the original story, the ghost of Christmas present, his time on Earth runs out and he Mm -hmm. turns into an old man. He shows um, Scrooge ignorance and want and telling him, you know, to be rare, both of them, but mostly beware of the boy who represents ignorance and about how if you ignore him, then, you know, everything will go into chaos. I mean, that was the whole last point of the ghost of Christmas present was to show Scrooge that if you're ignorant to everything that is bad around you, then things are never going to get better. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they transformed him into the ghost of Christmas yet to come, and then his little troll minions become little demons? Yeah, they become little demons, and there's just different scenes that, like, um, point to the occult, and I just felt like, you know, why? This is a story that has nothing to do with that. Why are we using every opportunity to infiltrate, infiltrate everything that we're watching and sprinkle it with just the darkness? I just, I, I don't think that that was necessary nor enjoyable Mm -hmm. um yeah that's my take on that all right so yeah i would say that there are some moments in it that just felt like okay we're just trying to add this in here Mm -hmm. to build more of the story like okay we have a scene in which when mr scrooge is going around to everybody saying that he owes them money and Then we have the scene in The Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come where he's showing him the future that, okay, that same person that he was saying, you better pay me the 50 pounds or else. And then it turns out that he was the one who was saying thank you to Scrooge for dying so that he doesn't have to pay his debts. And then he goes around dancing in his grave, which was featured in the original musical. But seeing it here was like, man, this is so distracting. Mm. So, yeah, I would say overall, my final thoughts... Out of all the adaptations of A Christmas Carol that are out there, this is just not a very good one. Mm. And I would, in my opinion, I think that I liked their attempt, again, to reach a younger audience, to give a different take, an animated version, which I don't think I've never seen. Well, there's a lot of animated versions of A Christmas Mm. Carol. There's Mickey's Christmas Carol, which features the Disney characters. Yeah, this is the only one I've ever seen, so I liked that. But, um... I think if they would have kept a little more to the original story, I probably would have enjoyed it more. Yeah. And there's just, to me, like, there's... They use a lot of color and music and dancing, and that's all beautiful and wonderful, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Just steer away from constantly trying to bring dark elements into a movie that just doesn't need it. Like, 
You can still be it can still be dark without needing to be sinister. Well, I have a I have a thing to say about the colors because this is supposed to be like 1840s England. So where's this all these striving colors coming from? It's like there's like a spotlight that's shining on that has like shapes of snowflakes. That just seems very distracting. Mm. I get it. It's supposed to be like nice and colorful. And this is supposed to be like, hey, it's Christmas and Christmas is wonderful. That's that's fine and all, but it's just super distracting. All right. So, uh, okay. How would we rate this in terms of watching it every year, every few years, or just once and never again? Uh, I, I, I will say again, um, it won't be a once and never again. Never seems like a very long time. But it's once and almost never. Uh, I would say I'm just done with it. I'll see it once and I'm done with it. Yeah, no, I would probably watch it again, just not not anytime soon. I, I never want to see this. Mm. Yeah, because I already know about a lot of other Christmas Carol adaptations. So, yeah, the, the all the changes that they put into it just didn't sit well with me. All right, rating of Santas. Oh, this is hard. I already know it. One. I did not like this one. One Santa out of five. Don't want to see it again. Wow. I probably, like, obviously I'm not as bothered by it than you, but I still probably would give it a one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that is it for our discussion of Scrooge, A Christmas Carol. Tomorrow we'll be talking about another Christmas movie or special. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye, guys. Gaze upon the sky Christmas on my mind Somewhere from a place up high above There's a song of love